Hey, welcome to the Curious Native Podcast. I'm your host, Sunas Makathian. And it's been a minute since I've recorded a podcast episode, I'm not going to lie. And, you know, what better way than to, you know, talk about a figure whose image has recently been under fire by a vocal minority that will not be named here because they do not need to be named because I will not be giving that type of behavior any attention. So, with that being said, in today's episode, we will be talking about a Native activist who not only left a mark on me, but thousands of Indigenous people across North America. That's right. We will be talking about Satchin Littlefeather and, you know, her life and the activism that, you know, she did and the legacy she left behind and the impact she left on, you know. Not only me as a Native person, but thousands of Native people. So, you know, I think the best place to begin is who is Satchin Littlefeather? Born Maria Lee Cruz, but better known as Satchin Littlefeather, was a Native American and Mexican Indigenous activist who fought for the civil rights of Native Americans. Though she really pro, you know, rose to prominence in the 70s after 1973 Academy Awards. Uh, whole fiasco and everything that entailed which I will be touching on in a minute but I did want to talk about Satching Littlefeather's early life and just let's be to cap it it was not easy her early life was rough Satching Little Satching Littlefeather's early life was not easy She was born into poverty to a white mother and an indigenous father. A Mexican indigenous and Native American father, Yoquai, or Yo, Yo, the (laughs) Yaqui. Jesus Christ, it is two o'clock in the morning. So, if I just mess up like that, please give me a break. Yoquai, the Yoqui and uh, Apache Blackfoot and you know at the time it was not it was illegal for you know interracial relations between white people and people of color so I'm sure this is something that reigned over her head constantly and was something that probably affected her as a child she claimed that her father was an alcoholic and that he abused them physically and mentally. So, just to add to you earlier, her life was rough. Not only that, she was raised by her two white grandparents, which often left her feeling, you know, underrepresent- underrepresented, you know, in her household and, you know, maybe, you know, feeling Un, you know, there's nothing for her to relate to. She, She's not having the same struggles as her grandparents, and her grandparents are not having the same struggles as her. She doesn't have anybody to identify with, so it left her feeling lonely, you know, as a young Native girl, which is something I'm sure that led into her, you know, her activism as an adult, which Satchin Littlefeather had always been interested in Native American rights and activism, but her journey in activism really started in 1960, 1963 when she became part of the Native American occupation of Alcatraz Island, which the occupation of Alcatraz was a 19-month-long protest when 89 Native Americans and their supporters occupied Alcatraz Island. The protest was led by Richard Oakes, Lenata Means and others, while John Trudell served as spokesman. The group lived on the island together until protest was forcibly ended by the U.S. government. The protest group chose the Indian, the chose the name Indians of All Tribes, IOT, IOAT. The IOAT claimed that under the Treaty of Fort Lorraine between the U.S. and the Lakota tribe, all retired, abandoned, or out-of-use federal land was to be returned to Indians who once occupied it. As Alcatraz potentially had been closed on March 21, 1963, and the island had been declared surplus federal property in 1964, 
A number of Red Power activists felt that Island qualified for a reclamation of, by Indians. Which, if anybody's interested what uh, the Red Power movement was, it was a social movement by, led by Native American youth to demand self-determination by Native Americans in the United States. So, you know, that's really where she got her start in, was at the Alcatraz, um, the occupation of Alcatraz protests. But I think she's most known for, which is like how I said earlier, we were going to touch on it in a bit, which that little bit is now, the 1973 um, Academy Awards incident where she went on stage to deny the award for, I actually have the thing pulled up here, it's the Hollywood Reporter, which they also, let's just, let's just clarify here, sorry, that. That was a lot of noise. I had to put something down. Let's just clarify that they also made a report when a certain list came out claiming Sachin Littlefeather to be a pretend Indian, which I'm going to talk just a tiny bit at the end. I do not want to give that type of behavior and that type of rhetoric any, you know, place here on the channel, but I do plan on making a video on that, you know, whole phenomenon that is going on right now and why I feel it's harmful, but for now, that isn't what this is. This episode is going to be about Satchin Littlefeather and her legacy and her only. So, you know, just stay tuned in the future if you want that podcast episode, but for now, this is what I'm going to be talking about. Um, let's see. I do have this. Brando had decided to boycott the March 1973 Oscars in protest of how Native Americans were portrayed on screen as well as to pay tribute to the ongoing occupation of Wounded Knee in which 200 members of the American Indian movement AIM faced off against thousands of U.S. Marshals and other federal agents in South Dakota town. After, presenten after presenters Liv Ullman and Roger Moore listed the nominees for the best actor and Ullman called out Brando's name as the winner, the telecast cut to Littlefeather, then 26, and wearing a traditional Apache dress walking to the stage front from, from her seat at the Dorothy Chandler P Pavilion, as the announcer explained, accepting the award for Marlon Brando and the Godfather, Miss Satchin Littlefeather. Littlefeather, however, held up her right hand to decline the statuette proffered proffered by Moore as she reached the podium and told the Chandler audience and the 85 million viewers at home that Brando, very regret regretfully, cannot accept this generous award. Speaking in measured tones but off the cuffs, Brando told her not to touch the trophy and had given her a typed eight-page speech, but the telecast produced, producer, Howard Koch, informed her she had no more than 60 seconds after after she continued, um, quote, and the reasons for this being are the treatments of American Indians today in the film industry and on, on the, and on television and movie and reruns, and also with the recent happenings at Wounded Knee, which little, let's, shat, when she had presented, you know, that Brando had declined the award for the way that Native Americans are treated in the film industry and how they're portrayed on TV. She was met with boos, with people, you know, yelling profanities, racial profanities, with people trying to run and charge the, state, uh, the stage. One of the actors, a f you know, a very prominent actor in Western television, specifically, like, Cowboys and Indians, you know, that era of the 50s and 60s, which was by, by the 70s had kind of fallen off. So, you know, I can understand why he was such, you know, he was such a sour puss because he was in part of the dying media that for a very long time portrayed Native Americans as these, you know, savages portrayed by white people in red face. So I'm pretty sure he felt called out and wanted to act a fool. And this specific person I'm speaking on is John Wayne. 
John Wayne did not like what I was saying up at the podium, Littlefeather said, so he came forth in a rage to physically assault and take me off the stage, and he had to be restrained by six security men in order for that not to happen. Which, the fact that that even had to, you know, the fact which he wasn't the only actor who did this. Um, there actually is a whole list of actors that, you know, they, people, somebody put together a list of the actors who charged the stage and the actors who were out in the audience booing and yelling profanities. And, um, I could sit here for a whole hour calling out each and every one of these individuals who did this, but for now, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give them any mind. You know, I think the best thing for us to do is to honor Sachin and to ignore and to forget about the people who tried to dishonor her at the Academy Awards. So, after that, she spent years and, you know, people specifically did not like what she was trying to say so they dis they tried to discredit her by claiming she was a pretend indian which she would always you know sh show she she was never you know afraid to you know talk about her ancestry so i think this leads me into the part where i wanted i had talked about earlier i wanted to talk just lightly touch on this and i mean lightly in recent times, Satching Littlefeather has, you know, by a vocal minority, you know, been proclaimed to be a pretend Indian. Which, this certain individual went as far as to, you know, go to her family, tell them that, you know, they were not Native American, which led to her sister coming out and claiming that Satching Littlefeather, her sister, lied about her Native American identity and ancestry and the reason why that she found out was because of the individual who told her which that is not how that works one that is not how that works the fact that this individual she who shall be named is using you know paper genocide as an excuse to exclude people from Native communities is absolute bullshit if you look through Sachin's um, ancestry records and familial records, a lot of her ancestors are documented as Yaqui, which is native Mexican, Mexican indigenous. That is native. I do not care about your colonial ideas of what what is native and what isn't. That is colonizer's thought, and I am not playing those games. Satching Littlefeather is native. These borders do not matter, and these nations, and, you know, the way that these countries run, it does not matter. Because at the end of the day, being native is being from the lands, and last time I checked, all, you know, all of North America is just one big continent. Where, you know... These borders, like I said, they're just, you know, they're imaginary. Satching Littlefeather is native. And, you know, Mexican people are native. Mexican indigenous people, let me just clarify. Mexican indigenous people are native. The first people of Canada are native. Native Americans are native. If you're indigenous, if you're an indigenous person of North America, you are native. And, you know, that's, 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 that's what I wanted to say. I just think the way that we try to discredit, you know, our elders in these communities and because we don't like what they're saying, you know, then they must not be real, which is a lot of what's going on. And not only that, there's a lot of jealousy in play here and a lot of hate. Um, and I've tried very hard not to, you know, address this individual. I've... Like made posts on Twitter if you want to go and look, but I'm not going to be addressing any of that drama here. That is not for that. I just wanted to, you know, make this episode on Satchin Littlefeather and what she did for, you know, 
what she did for us as natives and how she fought for our rights. You know, she 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 did so many protests beyond the ones I mentioned here. And, you know, maybe I'll do an expansion episode in the future. But for now, this is what it's going to be. But I did want to talk about her because she is somebody who, you know, who inspires me every day to want to do better for not only my tribe, but, you know, other people other people's tribes and other people's nations and just other indigenous communities here in North America, which is why, you know, I'm so, you know, I'm so much for in online safe spaces for Afro indigenous people and indigenous people, because we don't have a lot of safe spaces to talk about these things IRL and not even online. So it can be a bit, it can be a bit hard to talk about these things without, you know, without people in the background, you know, shouting what they're shouting. So she, you know, she, she definitely makes me want to do better for, you know, my community and wants, wants me, you know, she makes me want better for the community. And she really, you know, it's hard to put into words about, you know, people you look up to like this because she does. She just inspire she inspires me and I just wanna, you know, thank you, Sachin Little Feather, for everything you did for, you know, the indigenous people of North America. And, you know, thank you for what you did for me. And, you know, the only thing I think the people, you know, people like me and who really look up to her, the only thing we could do, you know, for her and her legacy is to continue it and to continue, you know, fighting the good fight. So I'm going to leave the episode off right here. If you liked it, please share, like, subscribe. Um, I also have other episodes out and go listen to them because, you know, they're pretty good too. I have two episodes out on Pocahontas. It's a two part episode. So that's, that's pretty cool. I also have an episode out right now on the appropriation and exploitation of white sage which is my most viewed episode right now i think it's sitting at 126 views at the moment and um if you want to follow me at twitter at huskasman at the end and please go follow the uh podcast official twitter page at tcn pod capital tcnp lowercase od and you know that's it for now thank you for listening and i'll see you in the next one